In this video, we're going to be working on attribute table work inside of ArcGIS Pro, calculating fields and calculating geometry and the assorted work that we have to do in the attribute table to make those calculations work. So we are looking at country data. Uh, I've got a country shape file. I have it displayed in just population, population 2007 in a nice little five class natural breaks here. Previous video went over how to do that. One of the issues with displaying just raw counts with geographic shapes is that the shapes themselves can make your data be misinterpreted. You can misinterpret data, I should say, based on uh, the way the shapes are set up or the way the distribution of your the thing you're counting is shown. It is much better practice in cartography to show things by density, to show things by a relative standardized normalized count rather than just showing raw population or raw counts uh, like we have here. But to do that, so if I want to show population density instead, Density would be a normalized thing to see rather than population, rather than just these population numbers. I would see people per unit, people per square unit, square kilometer, or what have us. I can do that. This is a spatial you know, system here. Of course, I can know the areas of these things, but I'm definitely going to have to calculate that because I don't have that field. I don't have that column in my attribute table anywhere. So let's get calculating. As you uh, might guess, we've got some options here in the attribute table and add a field. Sounds about right, add a new field in this table. Fields are what we refer to as columns. Columns, fields, fields, columns. Same idea. This is not like a spreadsheet though, if you've used any particular spreadsheet programs, where you can just you know have infinite columns that keep going and put stuff in it. We have to add them. The structure is a lot more tight. So we have to add our fields as we want to go. And we do that with the add field button. Now, before I click this, every once in a while, as you're playing around in Arc Pro, you will see, you'll have a little bit of a have a little bit of an issue with this, with this add field button. And you saw me clicking around and I, I accidentally made a little change. I added a space to the end of Angola here. You can see my little space there. I don't, I didn't mean to, I was, you know, maybe a cat jumped on the keyboard, something like that. But in Arc Pro, it is extremely easy, extremely, extremely, extremely easy to edit the attribute table. So I can accidentally add a space. I could, you know, drop my coffee and, and get stuff on here. There is nothing stopping me from accidentally editing this attribute table. My apologies, Angola. I think, I think you're about fixed there. Nothing stops me from making those edits just accidentally off opening the program, anything like that. For people who are familiar with old ARC, this is a huge change. Old ARC used to have essentially two-factor authentication to get into editing mode. You clicked an editing mode button. ARC said, you sure you want to go into editing mode? You said yes, and then you were in editing mode. It was very clear you were moving into edit mode with the old ARC. With ArcGIS Pro, it's not. So sometimes you'll be ed you'll be in editing mode, not ever intend to be in editing mode. And I can't add a field. It's grayed out. What can I do? All we need to do, the solution at least is easy, is head up to our edit tab up here and discard our er edits. I don't know what I did. I didn't intend to do anything. Especially if you're not planning to edit in a given session, it's really easy to discard, say yes. If you are planning to edit, it's a different game. We're not going to talk about edit mode anymore right now, but certainly be careful when you're playing around in your attribute table. So now that my add field button is back, I can add a field and call this field area because that's what I'm going to calculate. Remember, we're trying to calculate density and give it the same alias. And then I'm going to think about data type. 
This is really important. Once you set the data type of your field, you cannot change it in your shape file. So I want to make sure I know the type of data that's going in there with absolute certainty. Now I'm calculating area. So I know area is gonna be numeric. So I don't want date or text. Short and long are referring to integers and how many numbers of integers I can put in there. I'm guessing though, I could have some fractional area in this data. If we remember back to our math classes, integers are the counting numbers, one, two, and so on. But I bet I'm gonna have decimal. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna want a decimal point or a floating point. Floating point data type allows us to have decimals. I want decimals. I'm going to choose float. I don't need to worry about anything else. The defaults are gonna be just fine with me. I'm gonna save this change. It applies it, we're happy. And now I have a new area field. And there's nothing in it. Great, perfect, we need to calculate it. Our right, our friend, the right click is gonna come back and help us here. I'm gonna choose my new field, my new column area, and I'm going to calculate geometry. Set the values of this field by specifying the geometry, excellent. This is going to modify our features. So we're in countries here. It's going to change it. We like a change. I want area. So what property do I want to put in there? Area. What unit? I'm going to go with square kilometers. And then I'm going to use the default coordinate system. Just what's coming with the file here. Now, I probably could have done a better job naming my area field, right? I, if I pass this data off to someone, if I hand this off to an, another person, uh, they're not gonna necessarily know what unit this is in. Maybe if they really are good at memorizing the area of, of countries, they might. So I wanna I want change this. Now, as I said, some of these things in here are unchangeable. You'll notice I can't, I can't choose change data type here. It's all, it's all locked out. I can't change some of the precision information. I can't change the field name, but I can change the alias. Alias just is telling me how it's displayed. So I'm going to change it to area kilometer, maybe cam two, so I know that it's square kilometers. All right, and now I can tell, okay, area, square kilometers. That's, that's clear, that's, that's better information for me. I'm gonna go back to calculate geometry. All right, so area, property area. Is there anything, is arc gonna stop you if you choose number of curves? Absolutely not. Arc is only going to do what you tell it to. So it's your responsibility to make sure, okay, uh, area, area, perfect. Unit, let's go square kilometers. Is Art going to stop you if you, in your field named area square kilometers, you choose square nautical miles? Absolutely not. It's going to do what you tell it to. And again, I'm going to leave the coordinate system blank and just let it pull that as a default. When I hit OK, it writes the output in here, and there we go. Now I have area calculations for all of my countries in here. I could even come over to my symbology, re-symbolize, look, the bigger countries, there we go. We're shifting, looks pretty good. So now that I have a area, now I can calculate my population density. What do I need? I need another field. Once again, I'm gonna add a new field. We call this pop bin. Networks is the same alias. Once again, 
Do I expect to have fractional population density? Absolutely. If I'm gonna have a decimal, I need to have float. Fractional also meaning I expect non-whole numbers to pop out of this. I should, got non-whole numbers here. So same idea, I've got my population density, but instead of calculating geometry, that's just for area and other geometry functions, length, X, Y position, stuff like that. I'm going to calculate field. This is just basically our calculator, calculator. I'm gonna calculate this field. Input tables, the countries, the fields, population, the expression types, Python. We're not doing any Python right now, but it's nice to know that we could. And I'm gonna set up my math. If I scroll down here, I can see I have pop den is equal to something. This is where I'm gonna put my math. In this case, let's see, density is things over area. So I've got population 2000 are my things, my people. I'm just gonna double click that in. I'm gonna divide that by my area. That's looking pretty good. You'll note, I double clicked those in. I did not type them. I did not do anything on the keyboard because double clicking is the easiest way and the most assured way that you're going to get the input that you want. You'll notice that since we're operating in Python, we've got a certain syntax. We've got these exclamation points. Maybe I forgot that I gave my area square kilometer an alias. We've got to pull from its actual name. Maybe I just can't spell and I'm gonna misspell area happens. All of these reasons and more are good reasons to just click on things. Double click your items into your fields. I'll do it one more time. Population 2000 divided by area square kilometers. Things over area. Let's see what we got here. Oh, well, now I have population density. So I should expect for my more dense countries that I'll have bigger density and then my other countries, I will have less density. Once again, I could symbolize this, let's symbolize it based on population density. Well, that doesn't actually, hmm. I must have a lot of yeah, my dense, my super dense countries. Let's, let's sort this here. Maldives, Singapore, Gaza, Gibraltar. These are definitely, you're definitely messing up my scales here. So I might choose a different method of showing these density of these countries. I could, instead of natural breaks, do something like a quantile, equal bins. I can do something like the standard deviation. Oh, well, well, that didn't look, that didn't work. Well, let's try the geometric interval. Eh, it looks okay. Get the idea? Once you have data, once you create data, once you create fields, you become in control of the symbology, become in control of how you want to show things, become in control of what is the best way to show off the information that you have. Maybe I should have 10, uh, 10 groups there in percentages. I don't know, I'm gonna keep filling with this. You do too. Remember that we went over the attribute table, we added fields, we calculated geometry, and we did just some basic math in here. We even learned a little bit about edit mode, how to get out of that when you're accidentally in it. Have fun.